So the United States has chosen hyperinflation over deflation. According to Financial Boffin's most recent post yesterday, and it's a great post, I suggest you watch it. The gist of his post is that instead of clamping down on our spending and our debt, it looks like America is just going to continue to print money and devalue our currency in the long term. He's made it very clear that it's not going to happen this year or next year, that this is something that may be closer to 2040 or a few years before. And his reasoning for it is quite sound. I mean, he knows a lot of what he's talking about. And if you follow the growth of our CPI from the 1970s to today, especially over the past two years, you're going to believe it. That's assuming if economic conditions are going to continue along a linear path, and that doesn't happen for several generations at a time. Usually there's some kind of massive disturbance, some kind of reset, or something positive like a president who knows how to balance the deficit like Bill Clinton did in the 1990s. Boffins makes another great point with cutting expenses. You ask, how? What do we do? Cut Social Security? That's our largest by far? No. What about Medicare? Medicaid? No, we can't do that. And of course, we can't curtail our interest payments on the debt we've already accrued. And he hits the nail on the head when he says the path was chosen in 2008, not over the past few years, but way back then during the Great Recession, to choose inflation over deflation and some necessary market corrections. But I'd like him and the rest of you guys to consider something. We've had similar levels of debt before back in World War II, where the debt to GDP ratio was 120%. From the few years leading before World War II to the conclusion of the war, the US increased its national debt by a thousand percent from about 29 billion to 330 billion dollars. That should have brought us to an economic ruin despite whoever won the war. But that didn't happen. In 1971, when the US dollar went off the gold standard, we were facing hyperinflation. And then in 1974, we worked out a deal with Saudi Arabia where the price of oil became pegged to the dollar, the petrodollar. And from 1942 to the early 1970s, the United States economy had extraordinarily robust growth. Our GDP grew so fast that the mountainous debt that they racked up during World War II was easily paid off. In my opinion, is that the $1.2 trillion and more money approved in infrastructure spending by the Biden administration will grow our GDP because infrastructure spending generally has a multiplier of up to three. Meaning for every trillion you put into infrastructure, you get three trillion back after a certain number of years. If our government invests in the economy again, like it did in the 50s and 60s, I think what financial boffins is talking about can be avoided. And the only way we can ensure that we have a government that will invest in us is if we vote and we vote for the party that generally invests in the regular people and not the wealthiest. Let me know what you think.